Greetings. In this video, I'm going to be kitbashing a Primaris Lieutenant of the Emperor's Spears chapter. The base model I'm using, I believe must have come with a magazine or a paint kit, as it's a single monopose Primaris intercessor that I picked up second hand. This makes a decent base for conversions. Other than this, a regular intercessor would be a lot easier to work with, as it would require less cutting. So, if you have one of those going spare, then you're all set. Arm-wise, I'm using the spare sergeant arms that come with the assault intercessor kit. The bionic right arm suggests that this guy has seen some combat, and a chainsawed arm will work nicely for the spear to fit in with the chapter name. So once I have the base model removed from the sprue and cleaned up of mold lines, I need to remove the right shoulder, as this is designed for the standard arms of bolt rifle, which I am not using. To do this, I take my hobby saw and carefully cut away at the shoulder, trying to keep both it and the body intact, as the shoulder will be a useful addition for my bits box collection. Once the bulk of the cutting was done with the saw, I then moved on to a knife as it allowed for a little bit more precision towards the top of the shoulder pad area. The next step here is to make the spear arm, as the position of this will dictate how I do the gun arm pose wise. For a spear, I have this nice long one from an old Warhammer fantasy kit, but there are a plethora of kits that have usable spears. The Eldari and Drukari both have a few and many Age of Sigmar kits have spears. I had this one lying around, so that's what I'm using. First things first with this arm, we need to remove the chainsword and its pommel. The blade can be carefully trimmed away with a knife or saw. The pommel gets the same treatment also, and is then cleaned up to ensure a nice surface for gluing later. With the chainsword removed, you could just glue a spear on with plastic glue, but doing this would leave a very weak joint, which would most likely snap in short order. To fix this issue, we can instead pin the joint. To do this, you take a 1mm hobby drill and carefully drill through the remaining chainsaw handle all the way through the hand and out the other side. To make it easier for the drill to bite, it can be a good idea to make a small indent with your knife where you want the drill bit to go. Now with the spear, unfortunately I cut it off off camera. To do this, I just took my knife and carefully removed the top of the spear near the arm, cleaning up the joint area with the knife again. After that, the bottom part of the spear could be removed. Now, I actually took out a fairly long section of this, as it was rather lengthy. I think the original model was a chariot, so the extra length would have been needed. In this case, however, it wasn't, so it could be shortened down. With the top end of the spear sorted, I needed to sort out the other end, which I did actually do on camera. All that was needed for this part, to be ready to attach, would be to remove the hand near the end of the spear. This was done by carefully cutting away with my knife. A note here that the plastic on the spear is a fair bit softer than that of the Games Workshop's newer models and could be cut really easily. Take care when cutting the harder plastic as you are much more likely to slip and hurt yourself. With our spear cut to size, I can now work on drilling the spear parts out ready to be pinned to the Primaris's hand. Again, making an indent with a knife first really helps here as the spear is not that much thicker than the drill and going off centre will cause problems. Making sure not to let this happen, carefully drill out the spear haft a few millimetres deep to accept a pin before moving on to the other half of the haft and doing the same thing. Once all the drilling has been done, you now take a small length of wire the same size as the hole we drilled a dab of super glue on it. This can then be inserted through the hand, leaving it protruding a few millimetres on one side. Paper clips actually work really well for this, they're the right kind of size wire, as does florist wire. Next up, get another dab of super glue on the short end of the wire, and it can be inserted into one end of the spear, making sure to get it nice and tight with the hand, otherwise you're going to have a bit of a gap there and it might look a bit silly later on. With half the spear attached, you can then remove the excess wire with my clippers, leaving once again a few millimetres protruding on the other side of the hand. Again, a dab of super glue, and the other side of the spear can be attached. With this pin in place, the bond between the parts will be a lot stronger. In the case of this model, it survived my cat knocking it off the table without instantly snapping off, something I feel would not have been the case had it just been stuck together with plastic glue. Spear attached to hand, we can now look towards getting the arms on the body. First though, 
The tab that's used to attach the usual arm to this model needs to be removed as it's just going to get in our way somewhat. This is easily done with our clippers and can be cleaned up with a knife before we bring in the arm for a test fit. With an idea for a pose now worked out, I could glue the arm to the body with some plastic glue. A quick reposition later, and the lieutenant now has his melee arm attached. So now, I can do similar with a gun arm, before adding the power pack that came with the model. Usually, I like to keep these in sub-assembly to get the paint into those little pipe things on the front of the power pack, but in this case, I'm going to be doing some green stuff work to that area, and it really needed to be on the model in position for that. And speaking of green stuff, taking equal parts of yellow and blue and mixing them thoroughly, add a nice little sausage of green stuff to go around the collar and the right shoulder area. As this chapter is fairly tribal in heritage, I was going for the idea of a pelt of some sort, which is actually a fairly easy green stuff creation. Good for me, because I am not the greatest at sculpting, and you can't really go too much wrong with furs. Taking a cocktail stick, I first made sure it was leaving enough space in the neck area to allow for a head, before gently poking the green stuff around to shape and spread it out into a fur-esque looking collar decoration. This process can actually take some time, and the more time you take, the better result is in general. Once you are happy with what you've got, you can leave it for a little while to let the green stuff cure a bit. Usually you would leave it overnight, but I actually wanted to put in some more decorations on the model and having it a little bit pliable would be useful in that regard. Moving on, whilst this cures a little, he needs a head, and the head needs a plume to make him out as a commander in the Emperor's Spears. Being a lieutenant, he would have a plume that runs from the front to the back on his helmet. And for this, I'm using one of the helmet plumes from the Hellstriders of Slanesh kit from Age of Sigmar. As I'm attaching the plume to the helmet, I decided to go with one from the Suppressor's kit, helmet-wise, as it's quite flat on the top, although any Primaris helmet would do. Taking my knife, I remove the curved part where the plume would normally attach to the Hellstrider helmet, as this is not required, and then carefully shaved it in so it would fit to the Primaris helmet with a good bond. With that trimmed down, the tail end of this plume would have to be removed, as it would get quite in the way of fitting the helmet to the body. This can be done with a knife, taking care to try and line up the cut with one of the lines of the plume, so it doesn't look too out of place. Although that said, this would be near the back of the head and neck, so wouldn't be particularly visible by the time we're finished. Speaking of not visible, now the plume can be glued to the helmet. However, due to my unfamiliarity with the setup I'm using at the moment, I actually did most of this off screen. On the plus side, however, I did manage to drop the finished head onto the desk, thus proving that the glue works. With our helmet all plued up and the head can now be glued into place on our marine. It took me a little while to position it in a way I wanted, because the suppressor head I'm using is angled slightly downwards, a pose which I felt didn't suit too well with the upwards held weapon. Luckily some strategic wiggling could alleviate this problem easily enough. Now with the head attached, this guy could actually be left here, but as he is a lieutenant of a tribal influence space marine chapter, I feel he needs a little bit more. To this end, I turn to the Space Wolves upgrade sprue taking from here the rune and fang strap necklace thing from the said kit. As my green stuff was still fairly soft, this could be poked into it around the neck area to give him something that set him out a little bit more from the rank and file and gave him something a little bit further away from your plain ultramarine character. As well as this necklace, I also taken one of the fur tuft tail bits from the same upgrade sprue, for whilst Nemeton is known mainly for its oceans, strapping fish to themselves doesn't really come across as something a space marine would do. Tales of some beast they have slain, however, makes much more sense. Once this is attached, it only seemed natural to give this guy some purity seals. Clearly he has seen a few campaigns, so he would have some honours from those. With two glued nicely onto his leg where they can happily drag in the mud and get nice and filthy, I decided to add some grenades, because what space marine in their right mind would be without some trusty explosives for dealing with those hordes of xenos or rampaging cultists. After the grenades, back to the purity seals. 
this time on his weapon just to really get that whole wax and paper thing going on right next to a superheated barrel. And then finally a fourth purity seal right near those exhaust ports on the power pack. Now all these little trinkets and bits I obtained from the Primaris Reavers kit. Though most Space Marine kits come with purity seals, relics and various other little bits that can be used here. Basically whatever you have to hand will likely do to add to your model and really make it stand out as being a special character rather than just your average marine. Now this fella here is nearly done but I did have a couple more things I wanted to do. Whilst looking for parts on eBay to make some Space Marine Wolves blade guard, I came across some Viking looking shields which I thought were ideal. When they turned up however they were quite a bit on the small side for a blade guard as the blade guard shields are generally quite large. For this lieutenant however I thought it could work and would help to hide some of the cutting that was done around the hand area. So taking some plastic glue this little shield could glue quite nicely over the hand and the grips on it were actually spaced perfectly for this. And I think it came up with a fairly nice effect. Now one of the final pieces the Primaris Lieutenant has an iron halo on his power pack. To make this I am going to take a Stormcast Eternal head and very carefully remove the halo from that with my knife. A quick tidy up of the cut areas and this can be glued into place on the power pack. It does actually fit quite nicely on the two little square bits that protrude from the top. With that attached there is only really one more thing I'm going to do to this model before basing and that is taking the, the rondel from the Assault Intercessor Sergeant upgrade chest piece, bit of a mouthful there, and clipping it free from the extra parts until I'm left with just the rondel. I came in with some super glue to attach this to the chest in an appropriate position. I use super glue here because it has to stick to the green stuff. And with that, the lieutenant is finished. Well, not quite. The rules don't actually have a data sheet for a spear and plasma pistol. So with that in mind, I used a small blob of green stuff to try and make the barrel of the plasma pistol a little bit more elongated so it looks closer to the neo volkite weapon of the Indomitus Lieutenant. Sadly, this was an afterthought before I painted it and I don't actually have the footage of this, though it is literally as simple as squishing a bit of green stuff on there and using a toothpick to make a hole in the middle for a barrel. With that done, all that's left is to base. Uh, this miniature came with a small decorative base, however the lieutenant does have a 40mm base instead, so I switched it out for one I had lying around, adding a bit of debris to the base just to raise his left foot slightly, further changing his pose from that of the original model. Sometimes even subtle changes like this can do wonders for giving your miniature some individuality. With all that done, the final thing to do is give this guy a paint job, a bit of basing paste, and you'll have something along the lines of this fella here. Painted up in a vibrant blue with his bright white helmet and a black and red plume, this Primaris Lieutenant of the Empress Spears chapter is ready to purge Lara's Vale of all who choose to encroach upon humanity's domain. His spear proudly aloft rallying his forces around him. If you like this video, please consider giving a like and a subscribe, as it would really help out. And with all that said and done, have a good evening everyone.